Okay, g'day all. Welcome to another video. Hopefully today's video is very exciting to everybody. This is my first direct uh, 3D 11 video. So we're going to get stuck into programming the graphics card for some 3D graphics. There's a lot of there's a lot of tutorials available on direct 3D and I think I'll, I'll, one of the problems that I have with a lot of the tutorials that are available online for um, direct 3D 11 is that they tend to mix uh, obsolete things um, like direct X10 will be mixed in there and um, D3DX10 uh, or whatever those helper headers anyway I'm gonna try in this video series just to use um, the latest uh, recommended methods from Microsoft so hopefully we do everything right and uh, it all runs smoothly anyway let's just get started so direct 3d Direct 3D is part of uh, DirectX, and DirectX is just a suite of multimedia programming tools. Yeah, lots of different things for making sounds and capturing input and, and displaying and graphics, of course. Um, DirectX is entirely written by Microsoft. It's not open source, and it's not flexible in the same sense that OpenGL is. So you can't use um, DirectX on a Linux system or an Apple system. It's just not going to work. Uh, if you're thinking about making something that runs on all devices from, you know, little Android phones all the way up to desktop PCs, maybe you want to go OpenGL. I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, at some point in the future, we might do a video series on OpenGL because it's just as good as DirectX. It's just as good. It's very different, but yeah, it's just as good. Anyway, so DirectX is a collection of programming tools. Direct3D is a component of DirectX that's used to render 3D graphics with... Um, graphics hardware. Yeah, well it doesn't have to be 3D graphics, it can do 2D as well. Uh, here's a, this is a very broad scheme of what happens, but the CPU, the central processing unit, is in charge of the whole system and basically what we want to do is um, send a whole bunch of data, triangles, little 3D colored triangles to the graphics card so that it can, you know, draw it on the monitor. Uh, but the problem is that there's a lot of different graphics card manufacturers. There's a lot of different uh, hardwares that do this, um, you know, graphics. And as a programmer, we don't we don't want to care about all of the little details between, you know, differences between Radeon GPUs and NVIDIA GPUs or, or Intel uh, graphics. As a programmer, all we want to do is say, look, there's a bunch of triangles. Whatever graphics hardware they've got, render it. And that's kind of where Direct3D comes in. It sits between the CPU and the graphics hardware. Yeah, so there's really, there's a lot of steps here that I've, you know, I haven't drawn out called the graphics pipeline. But this is basically what happens. The CPU sends a bunch of data and code uh, via Direct3D uh, to the graphics card. And the graphics card manipulates it in some way with um, its own language. It's got its, it's, it's got its, you know, completely different uh, architecture to a CPU, uh, but it manipulates the data in some way and sends it off to the monitor so that the monitor can draw pictures. Um, yeah, so we'll get into a lot more detail um, later on. Uh, all right, so before we get started with some code, uh, you're going to want to get the SDK. So I'm using Windows 8.1 and Visual Studio Community 2013 and Rather happily, um, the DirectX 11 SDK comes installed. I think it comes installed with Visual Studio. Um, yeah, it wouldn't have come installed with just Windows 8.1. I wouldn't have thought, anyway. Um, yeah, so if you haven't got a copy of Visual Studio, or even if you're using um, an older version of Visual Studio Express, i I got to say, this Visual Studio community is just brilliant. Yeah, you pretty much get the pro version of Visual Studio for free. So, yeah, go and find it. It's good. Um, okay, but if you're not using Windows 8.1 or you're not using Visual Studio Community 2013, you might want to install the SDK. So here's the link just here uh, from Microsoft. If I remember, I'll put the this link in the video description. There's another couple of links later on, which I hope also to put in the video description, but I forget everything at all times. So if I forget, just leave a comment and I'll add it. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. So. MSDN is our best friend. Uh, this is the Microsoft documentation system and it's available online for free and 
really we can't get anywhere in programming direct 3d or direct x or, or anything microsoft without relying on msdn really heavily so in direct 3d there's there's hundreds of lines of code this boilerplate code it's the same every single time we're just trying to set up the device to display something basic even clear the screen uh, for example there's uh, there's a there's a bunch of uh, samples that we'll get from um, MSDN and there's a simple texture loader they call it a simple texture loader over at Microsoft but it's about 2000 lines of code just crazy um, so my point is that often it's not a good idea to just take um, people's other people's uh, code and copy and paste but I don't think you should feel bad about copying the samples from MSDN that's what they're there for so grab the samples uh, here and you know you can type out some of it yeah type out some of it it's good practice but a lot of this stuff this boilerplate code you can just copy and paste from the MSDN samples yeah that's pretty much what I've done today it's pretty much what I've done uh, I've typed this stuff out before <laughs> it was boring don't do it um, alrighty, so on to the, uh, the boring bit before we actually code any Direct3D. We will do a little tiny bit of Direct3D at the end just to make sure that the SDK is installed. But what we've got to do first uh, is create a window. So this is quite dull and I've actually been through it already in the Direct2D vids um, where I typed it out, I think. I don't know why. It was a complete waste of time. <laughs> and I made a lot of mistakes too. I forgot a bunch of things. Yeah, look, don't type it out. And if you want to know why you shouldn't type it out and why you should just copy it straight from MSDN, um, watch that direct to DVID where I typed all that stuff out. Uh, yeah, good. Okay, so the first step, create a new project. Let's see. Okay, here's my new project just here. So this is uh, Visual Studio 2013, like I was saying. I've got a brand new project. That's good. What then? Uh, add a file called main.cpp. Okay, so it doesn't actually have to be called main.cpp, but you just right click on your solution over there. You go add and new item, um, cpp, and I'm going to call it main. That's just a habit. Yeah, I always call it main, but you know, you could call it anything.cpp. It doesn't matter really. Um, okay, so that's good. Uh, step two the main program entry point. So uh, if you're using the console window, uh, you just use main uh, is the name of your entry point. But for Windows apps, we use this win main just here. So if I'll just copy all of this and paste it over here, let's have a bit of a look. So one of the things that you've got to do is include windows.h. So um, we can use this w win main and this win API and h instance and all that sort of stuff. Uh, all of that's defined in there. And what have we got? Well, the parameters. So the first thing, the H instance, is a handle for the OS to ID the app. So the operating system obviously needs some way of IDing the apps that it opens up. So that's what this H instance is. Uh, prev instance is no longer used. I think that was uh, from 16-bit days. I tell you, computers nowadays are getting so bogged down with um, having to be backwards compatible. This is ridiculous. Um, H instance is um, just for backwards compatibility. Uh, LPCMD line is the command line arguments. Yeah, if we're past any command line arguments, we won't be in our <laughs> particular example. Uh, and the show thing, I, I, I personally think this is a bit of a waste really, but they make you do it anyway. So this is whether or not the window should start minimized or maximized or whatever. And W main or W win main, sorry, instead of just win main. The only the only difference I think anyway, I was reading on uh, MSDN. The only difference is that um, W win main is um, Unicode for the command line arguments, and win main was ANSI, I think. Um, anyway, after you've got that typed out, or um, or just copied it off, off uh, Microsoft, off Bill, <laughs> copy it off Bill. You might want to hit run and see if you actually got any errors. Nah, it's all good so far. Okay, that's good. The main entry point is done. Step three, the Windows procedure. Okay, so there's a bunch of different ways that you could go around about this, but um, I like to do things in a logical order. So the second step, which I've called step three, <laughs> Uh, is the window proc. So this is the window procedure 
Um, it's the event handling procedure. Yeah, so when we write a, a Windows app, obviously events occur to the window. You've got mouse clicks and, and, and buttons and, you know, people do all sorts of things to Windows. I don't want to know. Um, but this is the procedure that handles the events that happen. So we're only going to use this one event just here, which is post quit message, which just lets us shut down the program. And other than that, we're just going to use whatever the default window proc is. Um, so the functions for this or the parameters for this, we've got uh, a handle to the window, which we haven't made yet. We haven't made our window. Um, the message is code. So there's a huge list of different types of uh, events that can happen to a window. You can look that up on S MSDN as well, a list of the possible messages. And these two parameters here are um, just extra information about the message that's happening. So if you've got, say, a keystroke, maybe the user hit a key, then uh, this W param just here will be the key that they hit and message will be, you know, whatever the code for the user hit a key is. Um, okay, I hope that makes a bit of sense. Let's just um, go to step four. So I'm flicking between windows. There was a, 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 a comment on the last video said that my splitting up of the screen where I had uh, half of it was open office impress and half of it was um, Visual Studio. They said they said they didn't like that. So <laughs> I hope this is better. Whoever that was. Good on ya. <laughs> um, good. Um, Step four, register a window class. Uh, okay, so this is a bit weird, but you've got to do it in two steps. You've got to first of all fill out this structure, this uh, window class structure with uh, info on the window that you want to make. And after that, you can create the window. So this first step just here is registering this um, window class. So it's just how you tell the um, operating system, I guess, uh, what type of window you want. Uh, let's have a bit of a look at what we've got. So the, the parameters for this or, or the um, elements of the structure, the first is the size in RAM of the window class. Uh, the second is the window style. So you've got a whole bunch of options there. You just look up MSDN if you want to know. Um, the third, this is really important. Um, this is our window proc. Yeah, the function that's going to handle the events as they occur. Yeah, the callback function. Uh, which is this one up here. So you've just got to make sure that this function just here, WND proc, and your LPFN wind proc <laughs> is the same value. Uh, the next two are for allocating extra bytes after your window class. We don't want any extra bytes. Uh, then we've got the H instance of our program. That's that ID up here. I think you can leave that null, I think. Yeah, I think you can leave a lot of this stuff null. Uh, the icon in the top left, so you can have it um, display a little icon in the top left if you want. We just set that to null because I can't be bothered loading an icon or drawing an icon probably. <laughs> um, an arrow cursor, that's good. And uh, the background, well our background is just going to be white. Um, we've got no menu, so I just put null PTR there. And the class's name is main window, and that'll be important in just a second, the class's name. So you can put whatever you want there um, within reason. You know, you don't want to have terabytes of data. <laughs> That's your window name. Settle down, would you? So, no small icon. I'll just put that as null as well. We don't need a small icon. And finally, we call the um, the function register class X, uh, which is probably going to register the class. And if it doesn't, then we just return zero because our app can't even <laughs> open up a window. And I don't think there's much point in going any further. <laughs> Okay, so we've registered the class. What's the next step? Uh, create and show the window. Okay, so the last step. No, it's not the last step. Uh, I think the second from last step in, um, in actually making a basic window is to create and show the window. So that's this code just here. All this stuff's from MSDN. If you, if you don't want to type it out, just grab it off MSDN. Um, create a window. So this is one of the things here that I forgot in the Direct2D vids, um, this adjust window rect. So we want to make a window with a certain number of pixels uh, for its width and its height, but we want that to be its client area. Yeah, we don't want, you know, the header of the window and the border kind of eating into our pixels. If, if we say 800 by 600 pixels for our window, which is um, what these two parameters just here mean, um, we mean the client area. 
And usually if you just make a window of width 800 and 600, then the border will actually eat into some of your pixels there. So you use this adjust window rec um, to figure out yeah, the proper size for your window, granted that you want a client area of 800 by 600. Um, okay, so the first parameter to create window is the main, is the class's name. So you've got to make sure that that's the same as this name up here. Yeah, it's got to be the same. Um, the next, I think that's just the title of the window, the title bar of the window. So that can be nothing if you like. Um, then we got the style. So again, there's a whole heap of different options for style. Yeah, overlapped caption sys menu. This is all of the stuff that um, MSDN recommended. So good on them. We will eventually get past this as well, I think, and change this quite a lot. Uh, possibly when we go to full screen. I don't know. Uh, this will probably stay much the same regardless. But um, the next two parameters are the position. So we can just use the default position. Then we've got the width and the height. And you use the width and the height calculator by just window rect here. This is what I forgot in the direct 2D videos. Uh, no parent window, there's no menu, um, a handle to the instance. Now I think that can be null as well. I might just try it null. And finally, we don't need to pass any parameters whilst the window is being created. Now you can check in here if your H window was created. Uh, for some reason, I've blanked that out. I shouldn't have. Uh, yeah, you want to know if it, if it worked or not. And finally, after that, after you've... Um, called the create window function, you're going to get a handle back to your window. So these handles are super, super important in um, Windows programming. And you can use that handle then uh, with certain other function calls like show window. Uh, hopefully that will show a window. If I just put a breakpoint there on return, I want to see if you can um, set the handle to null. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no problems. Um, okay, so we're nearly done, but we do need to make the message loop. Uh, step number six, add the message loop. So this is another thing I stuffed up in the um, direct 2D vids because I was so busy typing everything out myself. The message loop. So I forgot this translate message, which is good for translating keystrokes, I think, from, I don't know, one language to another. <laughs> anyway, the message loop is very, very important. After we show our window, we want it to start collecting messages. So while the message isn't quit, <laughs> um, peek for a message, uh, remove it if there's one, uh, translate it and dispatch it. So this dispatch just here uh, sends the message up here to our window proc so that we can respond to keystrokes and that sort of thing. Um, that's what happens if there is a message, but, and this will become more important later, uh, what happens if there's not a message is we update and render our game. Good stuff. So I think we can hit play again and I could probably get rid of this breakpoint now and we should see our window. Yeah, it's going good. It's going good. Whew. Okay, so that's boilerplate code there to show a window, but the final thing that I want to do, and I think it's I think it's on a slide here. Uh, yeah, so I want to test that the um, Direct 3D 11 SDK is installed and one way to do that is to uh, try and include this header just here and the library. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of different headers with um, DirectX 11. Uh, this is just one of them, super important one too. So try this and uh, D3D11 underscore one dot H. So I think I hit F1, hello. <laughs> yeah, I hit F1, that's why that come up. But just uh, put an include there to the header D3D underscore 11. And the other thing is include the library with your linker. Yeah, so a lot of the time when you're using different DirectX things like the compiler and, and well, just everything pretty much, you've got to include a header and you've also got to include a library for it. So the library for Direct3D11 is d3d11.lib. And just click apply and OK and hit run. So if this doesn't work, if it complains about a missing header, then your DirectX SDK is probably not installed correctly. As you can see on mine, it's it's fine. Uh, there's another header, which is that. I th think they're much the same. Maybe the underscore one is a slightly updated version of the header. I could be wrong. 
Um, the other thing that you might want to do is this um, prag pragma pragma comment. Someone must be using the washing machine. My speakers are crackling. Uh, pragma comment. Some people don't like to include the lib in your project properties. So the other option is let's see if we can get this right. Pragma uh, comment and lib uh, d3d11.lib something like that. Yeah, something like that. So instead of going through project and uh, properties there and adding the library to your linker, you might just want to do that pragma comment nonsense. Uh, I happen to like going through the project, but uh, it's just me. It's up to you. It does the same thing in the end. So what difference does it make? Um, all good. So I hope you were able to copy that code out, uh, either type it or, or copy it from uh, MSDN, and you should be able to compile your app and see a blank window. Cheers all. Have a good day. See ya.